Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 9, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to talk about binocular stereo and disparity. How to see different uh, problems in uh, multi -view, multiple view geometry. One of them is uh, binocular stereo, uh, how to approach that problem and how to have solutions to that problem using uh, different methods. We are going to look at them and also we are going to study how to calculate a disparity map which are depth maps basically using uh, these techniques in multiple view geometry. So let's uh, jump into them. Um, so in multiple view geometry, uh, one of the main problem is uh, detecting structures uh, of the real world. In the 3D world, we capture, we capture different um, uh, images of the 3D world through different camera positions. For example, here we have three different camera systems and uh, we are imaging the same 3D world um, and uh, converting this 3D points into 2D points in, in this image plane. And for each of these camera, we have the rotation and uh, translation matrix is basically uh, known. We know these um, parameters and using this information, can we reconstruct the original location of this 3D point or not? That is the question or the problem that you are trying to solve in uh, detecting structures using the uh, multiple view geometry uh, in which we have uh, different combinations of cameras uh, set at different points in the along the scene and they we captured those uh, this uh, this uh, this scene in different views and we try to reconstruct the 3d world using that if you remember in the beginning of the lecture i think in the first part of the lecture when we were discussing about some applications of computer vision one of them was uh, uh, reconstruction of uh, this 3D view through by taking ca by capturing multiple views of the th same scene using um, time shifted cameras. Okay, so we we looked at that uh, at a uh, at a scene from the movie Matrix and we saw how it was uh, constructed. So something similar uh, can be uh, thought of in this context as well, where we are trying to estimate the 3D coordinates of uh, of the point in the real world using the images captured through different viewpoints. Essentially this. Um, using multiple view geometry, we are also trying to, f uh, we can also have a different set of uh, corresponding points known correspondences between two or more images. And we, and using this, so for example, if we, if we know this point correspondence is in each and every um, images that we generated, uh, can we reconstruct the camera parameters from them? And um, in this case, uh, the cameras are moved along, um, sorry, my mistake. Uh, in this case, the images are captured using the same camera. So in a way you are reconstructing the either the motion uh, of the camera or uh, your camera is stationary and the image is changing and you're capturing different images, um, uh, mo moving images or a video kind of. So you find correspondences between different frames of a given video or different images and try to reconstruct the motion of the objects inside them. This kind of problem can also be solved. And we have already seen in our previous part of the lecture where we were discussing, uh, where we discussed in detail uh, dense motion estimation in which uh, we essentially were computing optical flow vectors um, for each and every pixel value of a given image. And this uh, optical flow vector will give us uh, the direction of motion and uh, the, its magnitude uh, in the, in it, um, in the real world, so how much it moved and um, from one image uh, to another image or from one frame to another image. So optical flow is a way of also trying to estimate the motion also. So we saw this uh, in the previous part of the uh, lectures and we have also seen parametric um, motion estimation also using optical flow techniques and uh, solving an error matrix. Um, so essentially you create an error matrix where you try to optimize it using different um, um, transforms, whether it's a Euclidean digit body transform, whether it's a translational motion or it's a rotational motion, uh, depending on what kind of motion you have, you can solve um, the problem for uh, estimating optical flow vectors. Uh, so this is just a reconstruction of the same idea here, where you have uh, two cameras uh, shifted um, in a 
translational manner and uh, both the cameras generate image in their image planes they have uh, locations of uh, the same 3d world points and by calculating um, the optical flow vectors uh, of these two point uh, of the, these two images you can construct um, the 3d location of the real world uh, images uh, real world points as well another one is uh, another problem is um, a stereo correspondence problem where you have um, images of um, the same scene taken by three, uh, multiple different cameras and given one point in an image uh, where could its um, corresponding point lie in another image uh, this is the stereo correspondence problem that is uh, being solved here and uh, we have also discussed this in um, uh, projective geometry as well and uh, after that we have seen into uh, epipolar uh, constraints on how one point um, uh, in, in the real world point when it's uh, represented in the image plane uh, how it can be represented uh, or uh, using the epipolar constraint where this, ima this image point can be found in the other image. We established those, um, uh, those uh, correspondences and this is also uh, this can also be used for finding the stereo correspondences and uh, recover the 3D geometry of the world. So something like this. So this point we know in this image plane and it's a uh, probable location or the line where we can find this point in another image uh, is along its uh, corresponding epipolar lines in different image planes. Okay. And what is binocular stereo? So in binocular stereo, we take a lot of uh, assumptions. Uh, here is a very good example. Um, this is a left image and this is a right image. As you can see uh, near this uh, head and uh, this location where uh, the lamp meets the head. Um, from this left hand image, it's not easy to say whether the lamp is in front of the head or the head is in uh, front of the lamp. But when you look on the image on the right, we see that there is a motion um, that uh, due to which uh, the uh, lamp is in front of the of this uh, head and therefore uh, we can infer using this information that uh, the lamp is more closer to the camera than the uh, than the head is and uh, the solution to the binocular stereo is uh, some kind of a disparity map which is shown here at the bottom it's essentially a map which shows uh, the distance of every pixel in the image from the camera so as we know uh, that when we uh, when when there is a motion or when we take images from uh, these perspectives um, the objects which are closer to the camera center uh, will move faster or um, have more lateral motion than the image uh, than the objects which are uh, farther from the camera centers so here is a, um, an example reconstruction of this disparity map or the depth map which shows uh, the objects which are near to the camera in lighter shades and whereas the objects which are away from the camera in uh, darker shades. Uh, binocular stereo we are going to discuss on how to solve this and how to find this kind of uh, disparity uh, maps. That is the goal of this uh, part of the lecture. So what is stereo vision? The goal is essentially to infer information about the 3D structure of the world and distances of uh, each and every point in the 3D world from um, the camera center. And we do this by at least two images taken from different viewpoints. Um, there are, so essentially in stereo system, we solve two major problems. One is the correspondence problem. Uh, correspondence problem is uh, basically finding out, um, so let's say this intersection of this uh, region, the region where this uh, head intersects this lamp, where can we find uh, on the right hand side image? Here it is um, gone, right? So here it's not uh, intersecting. So we need to find such correspondences that we can find in both the images. For example, a better, uh, uh, an example where, where, where which, it, uh, which works is uh, this handle of the lamp or the nose of this head these features or these feature points are um, visible in both the images so we need to find such correspondences in both the uh, images so feature correspondences 
and we already have seen how to find feature points or key points from different images uh, we started with corners and then we came with the histogram of uh, gradients and then we also saw uh, shift feature so using any of those techniques we find different feature points which correspond to both the images and we establish this correspondence so that is the first problem to be solved for uh, solving stereo vision problem the second one is uh, using this um, correspondences you find how how much that point has moved from one image to the other image and using that information you generate this disparity map here for example so let's say uh, we, we take this handle here of uh, the lamp and we find that uh, it has moved uh, quite a bit on the left in the right hand side uh, in the right image and using that disparity information we construct this depth map which shows how much far uh, each point in this lamp is um, from the camera center now it now once the correspondence problem is solved we have feature points which are easy to locate and um, match uh, so we can only find correspondence uh, sorry we can only find disparity easily for those uh, points which were um, easily found through correspondences but what about these points which are there in the um, in the surface of the lamp for example because this is quite uh, flat and there is not featureness uh, there are there, the featureness of these points are very low uh, as we have seen also for optical uh, flow that we need to find this uh, regions or feature points which are distinctive so how do we generate this kind of depth map for these images? Uh, so that is another problem called reconstruction that stereo vision is supposed to solve that we are going to see how it, we, we will solve that as well. So these are the two main problems uh, or the main sub problems that we will solve using uh, stereo vision. And in uh, inferring the 3D structure of the world, um, these are the two main steps towards, uh, uh, towards that. Yeah. So the first, the first um, thing that we uh, want to look into is uh, depth. How to calculate depth from binocular uh, disparity? So binocular disparity is how our eyes are uh, constructed. So this is a basically a rough model of our human eyes. Our eyes are separated by some baseline um, distance, and uh, usually we uh, roughly it is considered around seven centimeter the separation between two human uh, uh, eyes. And um, this separation is fixed for us and uh, evolutionary we have gained or evolution has developed uh, these two different uh, the stereo vision for us in which um, what we do is what our eyes do does is uh, for example we take uh, uh, we consider P as our um, converging point here for reference point here. Um, the image of P on the left hand eye, left eye is here and corresponding um, image is formed in the right hand side here. And if another point moves towards uh, the eyes, so let's say C is an object which is closer than P is, then um, that is, then the eyes um, move inward, inward like this in order to focus on this and therefore the uh, projection is moved towards uh, right in the right eye and towards the left in the left eye and this disparity is considered positive and um, similarly if there is an object which is farther away from the point P then the eyes move uh, outward and the, um, the disparity that is generated here at the back of the eye is considered uh, negative. Uh, the, magnet, uh, the magnitude is, is more important the signs are not so uh, not as much we can, you can consider one as positive with the other one as negative. Um, so this is how you calculate depth uh, by using this disparity. This is how our eyes calculate depth using this disparity generated by the movement of the eyes. Okay, uh, depth from con convergence. So using the same principle, uh, let's say if you are uh, looking at an object which is going slowly away from you, so the angle that it forms. Uh, with the this axis of the eyes both the axis intersecting axis of the eyes becomes smaller and smaller and so uh, if you know this angle and uh, you know the change in this angle you can infer the depth uh, whether it's increasing or decreasing so 
uh, if you see an object moving towards you this angle basically um, increases and your eyes are uh, human eyes are uh, able to detect this change in the uh, this this angular angle and uh, through this we infer the uh, depth of the um, real world image or if the object is coming towards us or is going away from us um, also interesting to note that um, for humans uh, the performance of up to around 2 2.5 meters is good but beyond that it becomes very difficult and the reason is that even if the object moves uh, a lot more distance when it is far away the angular change is quite small uh, and it is due to the fixed distance of our eyes and uh, because of this we are not able to see far uh, further objects okay so how do we solve the binocular stereo uh, problem is uh, let's take a basic setup of um, the stereo binocular stereo here we have two different uh, object centers or the camera centers left o uh, ol and or which are the two uh, optical centers for of, of our camera and uh, their corresponding optical axis are mentioned here the assumptions that we make here is that both these optical cameras are um, have the image plane in the same uh, have their image plane in the same planes sorry have their image planes in the same plane and their corresponding optical axis are uh, parallel to one another so essentially they intersect at uh, infinity um, and also their scan lines are aligned so what we mean by this uh, is that when you are looking at uh, a particular um, horizontal line in, a, in an image um, the both the cameras will have the same horizontal line uh, for that image so basically it's just a separation of the camera while taking the uh, image of the same uh, scene and there is no rotation no, no movement no, no nothing what, whatsoever and therefore we can we, we say that the scan lines are coherent that is y l equals to y r um, q is a world point or a 3d scene point and its corresponding projections on um, left plane is q l and on the right plane is q r this is our uh, basic stereo setup so correspondences okay so now we have to find the correspondences of e, uh, each of these points um, along the image planes of both the camera um, uh, image planes um, essentially as I said QL corresponds to the um, um, QL and QR are, are the corresponding um, image points for the uh, 3D co uh, world coordinate or the scene point Q and for P it is PL and PR and um, um, basically the intersection of this corresponding rays uh, that generate from uh, P towards the sorry from the camera centers towards the P this intersection gives the location or the 3d location of the point in the um, in the in the real world and uh, as we said before um, uh, this point P can only lie on the same scan line for both the uh, camera centers for the camera for both the cameras uh, perspective uh, for the for both the cameras is um, um how do you say this um uh, world coordinates um the, uh, the scan line is the same and therefore p will lie on the same scan line for both the camera systems okay so now uh, but there is there could be a correspondence problem um it is possible that um that uh, some other ray um, intersects with another point says uh, ray and because of that we could infer incorrectly a 3d location of uh, the two points so if we misinterpret this correspondences uh, through these rays it is possible that we can um, we get the wrong 3d location uh, of the of the point that we are trying to um, correspond uh, for the point that we are trying to find the correspondence for so it is important to have uh, a correct correspondence and therefore um, in stereo vision one of the main problems to solve is the correspondence uh, problem and it, it has a lot of issues 
uh, one is the noise and the, how does the noise impact is that let's say there is a sensor noise or quantization or disc discretization noise which is uh, an internal um, noise generated by the uh, by the camera or the image capturing device and that can introduce uh, problems for uh, correspondences and also uh, there could be inaccuracies in the projection rays uh, that directly uh, affect our uh, correspondences for the point Q so it is possible so essentially how it is looked uh, in real life uh, because this is the because of the camera noise sensor noise and things like that uh, usually it's not a ray it's like um, a 3d uh, it's like a 3d uh, cone which uh, is um, projected towards the uh, 3d world and uh, when these cones intersect that region is where um, the correspondence is supposed to uh, occur so the thinner this um, uh, cone uh, the more accurate we will be able to uh, find the location of this 3d point and um, because of that because there could be inaccuracies in this projection rays um, it could uh, it could um, um, you know destroy or uh, severely severely impede the triangulation process and um, correspondingly the 3d uh, information that you are trying to recover can in, uh, can in, can suffer because of this Okay, so how do we solve the problem of uh, correspondence? One way is um, we let's take uh, some basic assumptions. Here is that um, uh, one is that uh, how to find the how, so how to find the exact distance of the point um, when you have found the correspondence. Uh, one the, the the technique is called a triangulation. So there are some basic assumptions that we are making here that for uh, for each and every point in the image we have found an exact correspondence okay so that is the first assumption assumption second assumption is the simple binocular stereo setup that we have already seen so ol and or represent the optical centers for the left hand image and the right hand image t is the baseline separation z is the um, uh, distance in the world uh, coordinate so z is basically uh, uh, shows you the direction or the um, or the axis where you are uh, uh, calculating the disparity. Uh, sorry, calculating the depth of the three um, D point from the camera system. And y is um, is the axis which is going through the email uh, through this plane of this slide basically. And um, x this these are the two image planes of uh, left and right hand side of uh, the camera centers. And um, the projection of Q on left and right are uh, mentioned here as XL and XR. And uh, yeah, so this is the basic set setup for the triangulation. Now we include, uh, so now we form this triangle. We see this triangle here. And we see another triangle here. So these two are similar triangles. Again, uh, we know this, this distance, this is XL. Uh, we know this distance as um, the baseline plus um, uh, so this this distance is not important um, but that is um, uh, but it, it is important to know that these two triangles are uh, uh, similar triangles so when you divide xl by f this ratio is similar to dividing uh, this x or the x location of this point divided by the depth of this point so this is how you uh, this is the um, similarity of the triangles uh, formula where the two cam uh, ca triangles if they are similar the ratios of their lengths are also similar and through this we solve for x which is given as xl into z uh, divided by f now we move ahead and we include we try to do the same thing for this uh, triangle formed here so here uh, xr divided by f this xr divided by f will be similar to this portion divided by uh, again z and this portion is x minus um, the baseline separation so x minus t is z and if you replace uh, this x from the previous calculation uh, and solve for z again we will find out uh, that it's um, uh, f into t by d and d, d represents uh, the disparity or the the difference um, 
uh, of uh, the or the moment how much the point move in the image plane from one image to the other so that is xl minus xr that is called the disparity and we know this disparity we know d we know t the t is the cap separation between the two image um, uh, optical centers and f is the f is the focal uh, length of the camera so by using this in um, equation we can easily find z the depth of the 3d world uh, coordinate and um, yeah so essentially this is how we solve the triangle uh, using triangulation triangulation we solve uh, the the problem for depth of uh, uh, of a given point mm. okay so now uh, we want to see what the impact of the baseline so uh, up till now up until now we have seen that for humans it is seven centimeter fixed distance so this limits our um, uh, capability to see beyond um, or our capability to uh, judge depth beyond a certain fixed distance so usually it is between two two to two point five meters it's easy for us to uh, accurately measure the depth but uh, as the depth increases um, we need to add more contextual information or more priory information we need to learn that information of the real world where we are traveling in order to infer the depth the stereo becomes uh, not so efficient at that time our stereo vision so um, let's say you have this uh, fixed separation and uh, the baseline different separation is uh, quite small here and as i said before that uh, for each and every uh, from the uh, from from this camera center, we um, um, project a cone uh, towards this region, and we find an intersection of, of the same uh, point by projecting this similar kind of cone from the right hand side of the camera, uh, right hand right camera system, and um, all these points basically, which are um, uh, estimated in this region, in this. Uh, four-sided parallelogram not parallelogram this is four-sided uh, polygon um, here the depth uh, uncertainty is quite high so for example if you are find, trying to find the the depth for this point this point can have depth from here to here so there is a huge depth disparity and uh, because of this also when you think about it in terms of human eyes um, the more far an object is it becomes more unclear how much um, is its depth and um, so there is uh, uh, so there is a solution to it right uh, we just increase the baseline uh, it's quite simple the solution right but when we increase the baselines um, surely we reduce the uncertainty uncertainty in the estimation of the depth but we increase the uncertainty in the correspondences what i mean here is uh, the more is the baseline the more separate the camera centers are the more different the images will be so there will be a uh, there will not be a huge overlap between the two images the overlap will start to increase quite more and because of this uh, the correspondence problem or uh, the finding the correspondence will suffer that pipeline will need to have uh, a better correspondence um, optimizer basically and uh, because of this the region of uncertainty will increase for uh, estimating the correspondence so usually there is um, 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 uh, you know uh, small baseline is not uh, suffers from the problem of depth large baseline uh, suffers from the problem of correspondence so there has to be uh, a compromise uh, between these two so given the kind of problem that you are solving uh, a baseline can have an impact on it and you have to decide uh, based on that uh, what kind of baselines you need okay vergence is so basically on the left hand side of the image you see the same problem that we were discussing before uh, this is the region of uh, uncertainty for the scene point where it could lie anywhere and this is the field of view of the stereo so this is basically where um, this region the dark brown region here is where both the um, uh, cameras uh, are able to look simultaneously so um, this camera is able to uh, both the cameras are able to look at this region quite easily um, an easy solution to this problem is that why don't we increase our field of view and in order to do that uh, we can move this camera 
uh, in an angular motion and we can achieve bigger field of view and this will give us a better uh, depth estimate and secondly it will give us a better correspondence so essentially we have solved both the problems that we saw in the previous uh, slide uh, due to the impact of the baseline but um, but now the baselines have uh, disrupted the binocular stereo setup is no more valid here so this is a bit different geometry to solve it has given us increased field of view so we can find better correspondences uh, which will increase our accuracy in finding the corresponding points it has also given us advantage in finding lesser regions for or the uh, or lower um, uncertainty in finding the depths of the the corresponding points however the geometry of the, our camera system has changed and um, it is not a bad thing uh, we can solve this problem and we will see how to do this in the next uh, part of the video um, thank you very much until then